there's continuing blackouts. We also know that most of the water is not clean and it's not drinkable. Yes, right. And I think the response from the United States government has been negligent. But I actually don't think the response would have been as great with a Democratic president, whether it's a Republican president that we have now or a Democratic president, because the status of Puerto Rico as a colonial or, or a colony has always made us a stepchild to the United States of America. So I don't actually think that our American citizenship guarantees that we are afforded the rights that many Americans are afforded. And part of it is because we are. We're people of color, we're Puerto Ricans, and we're a colony of the United States of America. So I think until the colonial condition is addressed, until we are in a decolonization process and we become a free and independent nation, that other climate catastrophes will continue to devastate our islands. so we can handle this. Yes. So is the, is the Puerto Rican diaspora presente? Presente! 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 So good evening, my name is Elizabeth Young Pierre. I'm the executive director of UPROSE, Brooklyn's oldest Puerto Rican organization. Today we have uh, a, a few people that are going to be speaking. Today is really about a moment of silence to honor the over 1,000 Puerto Ricans that have passed because of Hurricane Maria and because of federal neglect on the island of Puerto Rico. And so we're here to stand for them, to let them know that we have not forgotten them, to make sure that the media remembers that this story can disappear and so can the lives of our people if we do not pay attention and put a spotlight in the darkness that Puerto Ricans are experiencing right now. I want to thank you all for coming out in the cold. We're going to begin. Uh, I'm going to introduce you folks in a second, but first I want to introduce uh, La Car Caridad La Bruja because she has to run to a show. She's going to open with uh, La Borinqueña. You have the words. Everybody got the words? Everybody got them? You know the words? All right, Caridad, where are you? All right, so La Nuestra Bruja because esto se requiere brujería, all right? Brujería buena, huh? And I'll be singing the revolutionary anthem, the one that excludes Columbus, because I That's feel right. like at this point, we shouldn't be uh, doing an anthem that includes oppression, a murderer, a, murderer, a, rapist, a rapist, because what we're doing is just continuing and, and, and co-signing to this oppression, and we can no longer do that. 
para mi querida Puerto Rico, nuestros ancestros y toda la gente que están sufriendo ahora. Fist up, fist up. Yeah, fist up. Despierta, borinqueño, que han dado la señal. Despierta de ese sueño, que es hora de luchar. A ese llamar patriótico, no arde tu corazón. Ven, no serás simpático. El ruido del cañón, nosotros queremos la libertad. Nuestro machete nos la dará. Vámonos, borinqueños, vámonos ya. Que nos espera ansiosa ansiosa la libertad, la libertad, la libertad, la libertad, la libertad. ¡Que viva Puerto Rico libre! Nuestra gente, gracias. Que nuestra gente, necesitamos nuestra gente. We all need each other. Mm -hmm. Bendiciones. Much love, everybody. Thank you for what you're doing. Each one of you count. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Peace. Janae? Janae, you have to see um, Caridad. She's leaving. All right, guys. You know, this is very grassroots, very last minute, so it's amazing that you're all out here in the cold. So, our, my, my MC, uh, this is like a dream come true. I've got two MCs. I have Ricardo from Coquichula. Where is Ricardo? Oh, yeah. I have Ricardo. And I have uh, Rosa Clemente over here in red. She didn't get the memo about all dressing in black. Uh, but here is Rosa Clemente <laughs> because she is fire, so she had to come dressed in red. Um, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to, you all have candles? Yes. All right, lift up those candles. We're going to have a moment of silence for all of our loved ones, for over 1,000 Puerto Ricans that have passed. 1,000. Let's just have a moment of silence for them. up for 15 more seconds. We're going to finish this moment of silence. I'm going to say, que viva Puerto Rico. Que viva Puerto Rico! And we're here together in solidarity. My name is Ricardo Muñiz. I'm the founder and CEO of Chulo Underwear. We are honored to be here today supporting UPROSE, the oldest Puerto Rican social service, now social justice agency in Brooklyn, and all of you amazing people who are here. I'm going to hand the mic over to Rosa Clemente, and she's going to start with the introductions of the powerful people we have here, ready to speak and empower and excite you. Peace, everybody. First of all, thank you for coming out. So let's just start with the fact that not only is the U.S. government lying, the Puerto Rican colonial administrative government has been lying since day one about how many people have died in Puerto Rico. I created a project called Puerto Rico on the Map. 
I thought it was necessary for us as Puerto Rican and other Latino, Latina, and Latinx young people, particularly, not me young, but bringing other younger people there, to document our narrative. When we arrived on October 6th, the first thing most people told us is that the government was lying about how many people were dead. When we went to Utuado, we ran into a funeral home director who said, I have 14 bodies here right now. And that's in one part of Puerto Rico. Two weeks ago, less than two weeks ago, we find out through the Center for uh, Investigation in Puerto Rico and the New York Times that there have been a thousand plus deaths. But we need to remind everybody who thinks that the government does not lie about this, that they lied about how many people died after Hurricane Katrina. But in Puerto Rico, it's a little different because most of these deaths are deaths after the hurricane. And why? Because the United States government can invade any nation, but somehow they could not go to Puerto Rico to save people off a mountain. The United States government can assassinate anybody right now with a drone, but couldn't go to Puerto Rico to feed people, to give them dialysis. We all have stories, especially as Boricuas in the diaspora. My particular story is this, before I introduce Lisette from Muevete. When I got to Puerto Rico with the crew on PR on the map, two days after I was able to go to Bayamón, and see my Didi Gladys, who was in a hospital. And the only reason they let me in was because they knew I came from New York. And I had to put on a hazmat suit, and I only got 15 minutes to see her. And everybody who was in that floor was critical, but because they were not dying, and there was not enough clean water or power, they would not get the surgeries to save their legs to save their arms from amputation. I got 15 minutes to speak to her because she thought she would not survive two days. But luckily she did. That's one story out of 3.4, 5.5 million stories. We cannot forget who passed due to government negligence. To me, that is murder. To me, that's what it means to be a colony. And to me, we don't owe the United States government or any Wall Street bondholder one fucking dollar. That's right. This government, shit. this United States government and the international community that has let us down owes Puerto Rico reparations. It owes us a decolonization process, and we are going to fight until we are truly an independent and free nation who can self-determine our own faith and our own future. With that, I want to bring up Lisette Nieves from Muevate. But before Lisette comes up, we're going to have Naisha, a young person. You're young, right? You're younger than me? Okay, that's good. That's all. You come up here then. We got, let, let me tell y'all, I've been in this work for 25 years. The only reason I've been in this work is because of people I know, my elders I see in the audience, like uh, Jose Rivera, my peer Lizette, Mimi Rosenberg from WBAI. This is why I exist as an organizer. So if you're over 40, we got to pass on the mic. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, I'm going to lead you in some chants, all right? So repeat after me. One. We are the people. We are the people. Two, a little bit louder. A little bit louder. Three, we want justice for our people. Okay? We want justice for our people. All right, let's try that again. One. We want the people. Two. A little bit louder. Three, we want justice for our people. One. We are the people. Two. A little bit louder. Three. We want justice for our people. All right, one. We are the people. Two. A little bit louder. Three. We want justice for our people. I can't hear y'all, man. One. We are the people. Two. A little bit louder. Three. We want justice for our people. All right. I like that. I like that. All right. Let's try another one. 
it is self-evident Trump is not our president. Ready? It is self-evident Trump is not our president. 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 So in the spirit of weather that we are collective, so if all my people can please come up and take your spots. Your we spot. have prepared a collective. We did this yesterday in our meeting. Um, it is something that we created together. All right. Ready? Ready? Okay, one, two, three. Despierta comunidad! Wake up community! La isla necesita luz! She wrote a statement in her absence. Um, Jeanette, step on up. Boca Negra will lead uh, in Spanish and I will translate into English. Okay, hola. Mi nombre es Isaliz Echevarria. I'm Jeanette, but I'm reading for Isaliz. Y el impacto del huracán María fue aterrodado y frustramente durante y después. The, my experience with the hurricane was terrifying and frustrating then and now. Todavía estamos viviendo los efectos de los daños sin agua, portable, luz y super difícil conseguir los artículos de primera necesidad. We are still without light and it is very difficult for us to get our basic needs. Y los precios super elevados. With everything at higher prices. Si le está haciendo más se le está haciendo más difícil todavía a las personas con condiciones especiales conseguir los medicamentos y las necesidades para mejorar la calidad de su vida. It is even more difficult for those who require medical attention and it's affecting their quality of life. Al principio del desastre todas las comunidades se unieron y se apoyaron uno al otro como podía. At the beginning, all the communities came together to the best of their ability. Pero ya es a esta altura del paso del huracán, ya las personas se van desa desapareciendo al no tener provisiones necesarias. And now people are leaving our island because they can't get their basic necessities. Nosotros los puertorriqueños nos caracterizamos porque nos gusta ayudar a todos somos hermanos. Puerto Ricans characterize themselves as people who love to help. No está fácil, ya, y hay comunidades que todavía aún siguen incomunicadas. It is not easy, and there are still places that, are, that have no communication. Y las ayudas no llegan a, a algunos lugares porque no hay paso para las carreteras. And you can't even get aid to certain places because the, the roads are blocked. Debemos detectar primero estas comunidades y poder llegar a los olvidados. It is important to detect those communities and, and focus on the people who've been forgotten. 
No todo es como parece. Not everything looks the way it should. Ni las ayudas que están enviando llegan a donde verdaderamente no hay tanta necesidad. The aid that's coming in sometimes goes to people who don't really need it. Deben impactar esas comunidades más afectadas y olvidadas. We must focus on communities that have been most impacted and forgotten. Agradezco mucho a Muévete por su apoyo y a Community Connections for Youth que siempre me ha apoyado desde que comencé a asistir en el 2013. She is grateful to Muévete for her support and Community Connections for Youth that has welcomed her as, as a family um, and supported her since she's been in New York when she came from Puerto Rico in 2013 and still will be part of our community in Puerto Rico or here. Las comunidad, las organizaciones se convirtieron en mi segunda familia. Los amos, Puerto Rico está de pies. We love you, she loves you, and Puerto Rico is on its feet. Don't get it twisted. Let's hear another round of applause for Lisette. Yeah. And muévete, coño. Yeah. You know, we're gathered here today in unity from Orchard Beach to Luquillo Beach. And I'm going to do a quick call out for the three and a half million Puerto Ricans on the island and the other six and a half million here on the continental United States, all the way from Florida to Ohio to Maine to Alaska, hasta el coqui in Hawaii. Puerto Ricans are spread around the world. So people from the Bronx, presente! Presente! From Puerto Rico, presente! Presente! From Florida, presente! From Manhattan, presente! From Connecticut, presente! Presente! From Brooklyn! Presente! Presente! From Queens! From Jersey! From Cleveland, Ohio! And from here in Brooklyn, we have Naisha to lead us in another chant. In another chant. From the Boogie the Bronx. So Orlando, we end up with Boogie the Bronx. Orlando, we end up with Brooklyn. All right, guys, I'm back. All right, this next chant goes like this: Transition is inevitable. Justice is not. Ready? Transition is inevitable. Justice is not. Transition is inevitable. Justice is not. Transition is inevitable. Justice is not. Sorry, guys. Transition is inevitable. All right, keep going. Transition is inevitable. Justice is not. Transition is inevitable. What you said? Transition is inevitable. Justice is not. What? Transition is inevitable. Justice is not. Okay. What you do to the people, you do to the land. Let's go. What you do to the people, you do to the land. What you do to the people, you do to the land. What you do to the people, you do to the land. What you do to the people, you do to the land. What you do to the people, you do to the land. What you do to the people, you do to the land. Right. Thank you guys. Okay, you do to the land. You know what I'm saying? Oh, battery. Oh, battery. Oh, battery. Hey! Where the music at? Hey! You can leave your own thing. Go ahead, girl. Hey! Go ahead, girl. Go ahead, girl. Hey! 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 H
We're calling for the debt to be dropped. We need to drop the debt. Yes. How many of you agree? Drop the debt. 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 That's right. Next, we're been asking, we're demanding for the Jones Act to be repealed. We need the Jones Act to be repealed now, not for 10 days permanently. We're demanding solidarity with grassroots organizations in Puerto Rico that are leading the recovery. Solidarity. Okay. Solidarity. 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 We're saying no to the Puerto Rico Oversight Management and Economic Stability Act, otherwise known as PROMESA. No, no to PROMESA. PROMESA. No PROMESA. No PROMESA. That's right. We're demanding a push for a just recovery and transition. Just recovery and transition. Just recovery and transition. Just recovery and transition. We're demanding support for Puerto Rican climate refugees because that's what they are. They're climate refugees. All right, they're being displaced. A lot of people don't want to leave, but they're being forced to leave. And finally, we're demanding uh, a rejection of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And I want to say that all of these demands are elaborated on the UPRO's website. You can search for Our Power PR to get infor more information. And I'm going to end with a chant of my own. Pa arriba, pa abajo, la junta por carajo. I just want you to know how Our Power PR NYC came together. Um, and many of you know that I'm the co-chair of the Climate Justice Alliance, and it's a national organization uh, made up of frontline communities that are living and existing and surviving at the intersection of racial justice and climate change. People from Katrina who were affected by Katrina in New Orleans, folks that are being affected by the wildfires in California, our people in Detroit, people in Houston who were affected by Harvey and our people in Puerto Rico. So on October 11th, we launched a national campaign and four cities had a national day of action. We delivered 12,000 signatures to Congress. We sent a brigade and the ship from Greenpeace to Puerto Rico with the materials that people in Puerto Rico told us they wanted. We didn't decide for Puerto Ricans what their priorities were. We didn't determine we're going to send you this. We asked, what do you need? What do you want? And we got you. We got your back. We send them non-GMO seeds. We send them bicycles, solar generators. We sent them water filtration devices. We pass money directly to the front line of the climate crisis in Puerto Rico. And so out of that, a lot of organizations were meeting to determine what Puerto Rican priorities were, including Puerto Rican organizations that don't look anything like us, that don't come from our communities, who thought that this was an opportunity for the not, for nonprofit industrial complex to basically build their presence in Puerto Rico. And so we said, no, pal carajo. We, people, Puerto Ricans, speak for Puerto Ricans. And Puerto Ricans in the United States have a role to play because we, are the descendants of colonization, of slavery, of extraction. We live here because Puerto, because U.S. policies made it possible to push out tons of our people. That's how we ended here in the United States. So if you remember the fight for Vieques, when we were fighting to stop the bombing of Vieques, many of us were saying, what is the plan B? What is the plan B? Because we're going to win. 
And when we win, developers are going to basically swoop into Puerto Rico and take over the island and turn it into a recreational space after we spent years in the cold, in the heat, protesting to stop the bombing of Vieques. And that's exactly what happened. And so today, we have to be really vigilant because before Hurricane Maria, over 600,000 Puerto Ricans have already left the island because of PROMESA. And since Maria, another 300,000 have left the island. And so many of us feel that the island is being emptied out for privatization so that they could completely take the island away from us the way they did the Gulf South and New Orleans from black communities that had been there for generations. And so we decided that it was important that all of the groups and all of the people in New York City who care deeply for Puerto Rico be united under one banner, under the just recovery of Puerto Rico. You hear a lot of people talking about green solutions and sustainability, but sustainability does not mean justice. And so the environmental justice movement, the climate justice movement, we know that the solutions are local, that the path to climate justice is local that what happens in Puerto Rico was a climate injustice, that Puerto Ricans are climate refugees, and that the fact that it has been a colonized nation for so long made the hurricane particularly dangerous to Puerto Ricans' uh, livability. And so we are moving to support Puerto Ricans to a new economy, one to support local livable economies that move them away from extraction, that support food uh, sovereignty, economic sovereignty, energy sovereignty, uh, water, all of the things that are important to our people. So we ask you to join us. There are people who are going to be walking around with those little pads so that you could sign up, email us so that you can have information, and if you're doing an action, if there's something that you're doing, we can lift it, we can make it go viral, we can show that we are united and that we're supporting a common, uh, a common platform, which is the Just Recovery platform. We are different than other folks that are out there. You need to know who you're working with, who you're supporting, who you're giving money to, what their history is, what their track record is. You have a right to ask questions to make sure that the people in the island are benefiting directly from your sacrifice. And so out of love, out of love and desperation, you are all giving without asking questions about who's doing what. And there are some people who are using names very similar to us, but don't represent the interests of our people. All right. They don't they don't even represent the interests of our people here in New York City. All right. So you need to ask that. That is your right. You have a right to know. And if there is an organization who can't answer those questions, you do not want to support them. So our, our power uh, PR NYC is a coalition from Staten Island all the way to the Burgidau of organizations that are already doing the work. So it's not like our pros is co uh, organizing or determining priorities. We are facilitating that engagement so that we don't step all over each other, so that there isn't cacique warfare, right? And we're not tripping all over each other. So it's one love. So I want to thank all of you for coming. We have, uh, uh, Rosa is now going to go through the list of the organizations, and then we're going to close up because it's hella cold um, with uh, Dr. Oh. Drum. Dr. Drum, because you know that we need to basically invoke the ancestors before we walk out of this park. So, gracias de corazón. Rosa. All right, so first everybody get close, get closer. You know, we people color. Body heat is good, it's good, it's good. Look, my name is Rosa Clemente. I'm a Bronx-born, hip-hop, afro boricua I was raised in New York City, but as an organizer, I was taught in New York City. So I just want to just bring up the spirit of Richie Perez. Richie Perez is presente, and I also want to give love to our sister, Erica Garner, who despite what everybody's saying is still with us. And the reason I bring up Erica is because last week she did an interview and she talked about Puerto Rico and the solidarity that we need to have as people of African descent and as indigenous
this to said people, right? We need to be about solidarity. And for all the young people here who think, why am I doing this? Does it matter? How do I make a difference? Fuck yeah, we make a difference. Because everyone here represents a hundred people who couldn't come. Everyone here represents an umbrella, a Fifi, a Thea, a Prima, a Prima, who couldn't get here. And we need to always represent our people. And as young people, the struggle is yours. So before I shout out the groups who made this possible, there's a chant. There's a chant from Black Lives Matter movement that goes, I believe we will win. And I believe that Puerto Rico will be free. I, I believe, believe that we will win.